In years past, I might delay updating my iPad software because it was something goofy in the update I didn't like. But in the end, I'd update because, you know, time and technology move on and you can't get stuck too far in the past. But should you update to the new upcoming iPad OS 26? That's what this video is all about. Hi, my name is Rich and I make simple videos on how to use your iPhone and iPad and a few other Apple products without going nuts. That's sort of my thing. And if that sounds like it might be your thing, please consider subscribing. I don't know how it happened, but there's a great group of people all over the world who watch my videos, and I am the luckiest guy on YouTube to have their support. I can't thank them enough. Okay, in today's video, I'm going to leave out talking about the new liquid glass look, mainly because I'm still struggling with it and want to wait until the public release is out before I spend too much time talking about it. Instead, I'm going to concentrate on five new iPadOS features that, to me, hit the nail on the head and make a good case for updating to iPadOS 26 when it's officially released in the coming month. And by the way, these five features are not just small tweaks. They are big-time improvements, and they're just the tip of the iceberg of what's coming. So in today's short video, I'm going to cover the new phone app, the new preview app, the way the new cursor looks, window management, which has been the big thing so far on YouTube, and then lastly, the new menu bar and how it lets you dig deeper into iPad apps. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the new phone app. Now, in the past, you were able to use your iPad to make phone calls when it was attached to your iPhone, and it worked, but they have really polished on this, and they've actually brought the phone app to the iPad. But there's a little bit of setup that you have to do. First, you have to go to your iPhone, and you'll go into Settings, and you'll go into Cellular, and then you'll go down to Calls on Other Devices. And you got to make sure that's turned on right here. And it'll list the other devices you have associated with this Apple account. And so I've turned it on for a variety of iPads that I have. But that means that I can now receive phone calls on my iPad as it's connected to my iPhone. So once you do that, you then have to go over to the iPad, go into Settings, go down to Apps, and then go to FaceTime. Now, how non-intuitive is that? Why would you go to FaceTime for a phone app? I don't know, but that's what you have to do. So you go to FaceTime, and then you go to Calls from iPhone, and you make sure that's turned on. And once you do that, you are now set up to use the phone app on your iPad. Wasn't too time consuming to do that, but now when you tap on it, you get a full blown phone app that's kind of like your phone app on your iPhone. And from here, you can just tap on the phone and make a call, just like that. And it actually rings and the whole bit, and you can hang up if you want. And you also have a number pad up here that if you don't have a contact in here, you can just tap on it, bring up the number pad, dial, and make your phone call. It's as simple as that. I think for me and my workflow that this is going to be handy because there are times when I'm using my iPad that I don't have my iPhone hanging around me and it would be easy to just quickly make a phone call using the iPad. So this is a pretty good feature that Apple has brought in the new iPad OS 26. Next up is the new preview app. Uh, this has been on the Mac forever and the preview app is designed uh, primarily for you to work with PDF files. So I'm going to show you how this works. If I go into the Files app, and I've downloaded the, the IRS 1040 form, and if I tap on that, it just opens it the way that it used to. But now you see something that says Open in Preview right here. And I can tap on that and open it in Preview. But if I go back to the Files app, and I know this is a PDF, I can tap and hold on it now, and I can tap on Open With, and I can choose Preview. 
And what that will do is open it in preview, and it will also remember to open all PDFs going forward in preview. At least that's how it's set up so far. And then once you're in here, you have a number of choices. Now I've got my Apple Pencil here, but if you tap on the form filler, it just automatically knows where the forms are and you can put your cursor in there and it'll bring up the keyboard and you can just begin typing. And if you have a physical keyboard, this gets very easy to use. And if you tap on the pencil, you can bring up a pencil like this and you can just choose whatever color you want to sign with and you can just sign away in the signature line and add your signature to it. It's really handy. You can also go up here and tap on those little three dots. You can turn it into a dark background if you want to do that. And that's pretty handy too. And you can turn that off and on. You can also rotate it. You can share it. You can get information about it. And you can do a number of other things with your Apple Pencil. But that is the preview app. And I think this is going to change the way a lot of people use their iPad. Next up is the new cursor. So in the past, you had a little round cursor that was on your screen. I've got my mouse here and I've just connected it. And if you notice, if I just sort of shake it, see how big the cursor gets? That's a feature that's been on the Mac for a while to allow you to find the cursor. But how easy is it going to be if you have this on a stand and you're using a physical keyboard to now just use your mouse to navigate to an app just like that? Um, you know, you can click on anything, you can go up and uh, use it to uh, go to calendars. I mean, there's just all, all the ways that you could use a mouse is in here, and it's very handy. I think this is going to be a real game changer. You know, before we had the little round dot um, that was kind of used as a cursor, they've changed it to the look of the cursor on the Mac, and I think the idea is to get people to use the a mouse or a trackpad with their iPad and make it feel a little more like a computer. And to me, it really does. And I know this is not a big feature, but for me, it is a really handy feature. And I think a lot of people, as they begin to use the iPad in the coming year with iPad OS 26, is going to find this a great feature. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is just window management. This has been the big thing that's been all over the internet. You know, if you open up an app, you know, you've got the little handle down here. You can change it. You can grab it and move it around on the on your screen, anything like that. Um, you know, you can open up multiple apps like this. And you have the stoplights now up in the corner of the application, much like the Mac. And if you tap and hold on those like this, now you have a bunch of window choices, how you can manage your windows. You can use them in four squares or three. I have three apps open right now. I can just tap on that and it lines all three up. And that couldn't be easier. Before you were always kind of trying to size them and get them to do that. But now this window management is very, very easy. You know, to get back to your home screen, you can just swipe up like that. You know, if you open preview like we had it a minute ago, uh, like that, and maybe you want to, I don't know, open uh, photos, something like that. If you want split screen, this is just about as easy as it gets. You can just tap the split screen and now you have them side by side just like that. I think that is just a very, very handy feature. Window management is something that the iPad has struggled with since the very beginning. And now Apple has moved a long way in fixing that with iPad OS 26. I think this is going to be a great new feature in the coming year. The last thing I want to talk about is the new menu bar. So Macs have a menu bar at the top and you get access to a lot of sort of hidden features or the various features of the application. In the past, the iPad didn't have that. So if I open up the calendar, I'll just grab it and pull it down here. Um, you had, this is the typical things you saw in the past, but now if you kind of swipe down from the middle, you get a menu bar up here. And this is where the mouse coming in works so good with it. You can just go up here and click on it. You can add a new event. You can get into the editing menus. These are all kinds of features that were sort of hidden before. They were there, but you had to know how to get to them. Now using the menu bar, you can get to any one of these very, very easily. 
uh, it, when you click away onto the app, it does go away. I don't like that. I really wish it was just there permanently. It doesn't take up a lot of space. When you move the cursor up there, you can get it back. So it's not hard to bring back. You know, if you don't have a cursor, you can just take your finger and bring it down. But, you know, this is going to be really handy. I mean, if you want to uh, do the same thing over here for reminders. Now, if you notice, it always shows up in the middle. So if you got two apps like this, it can kind of be a little bit confusing. But if you've got one app open in full screen like this and you've got your uh, menu bar up there at the top, now you have all of these things that you can do with reminders that you probably never knew you could do before. Or if you knew how to do it, it took quite a few clicks and taps and all this kind of stuff to get around. But now you don't have to do that. It's just right there in the menu bar. Again, this is a quality of life improvement to some, um, but to me, this is really a, a, a big thing. It's going to make using my iPad in the coming year so much better. All five of these features are things that make a real difference in using the iPad. So are these five features enough to get you to update to iPad OS 26 when it's finally released? Let me know in the comments below. For me, with the way I use my iPad, there's no question this is an immediate download and install. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.